all of the, the, the people that get out of film school, that have the good fortune to have raised some money, are, are um, making make the, the, the sucker bets that, that are never going to happen. 3,600 films apply to Sundance, right? What do you figure the average budget of that is? $500,000 maybe? So that's $1.8 billion a year that, uh, that, that go into the independent sector in America with like three films getting distributed and one of them may be making some money. You know, $1.8 billion, you know, we're not gonna have Congress give our industry a bailout, right? That money is, that, that money is lost each year. And if you slow down, you just do the work that, that we do on each of our movies, um, and, and now have really started to adopt, adapt to do on the second half of it, start to really look at how to bring the audience um, to your film. The first part, which I neglect to say, is do, do the hard work of how to make your film really as good as it can be, and I'm happy to talk a little bit about that, because that's always, always gets neglected. But I think a lot of it is just slowing down. But the, the uh, second half of going out and re reaching the audience and bringing the audience to you is really the most exciting thing. A lot of times when people say that there's no good movie to see, they, they say, well, if I'd seen you know, three or four good movies I'd, this year, I'd be much more inclined to go see three or four more. Well, I can tell you there are good movies that aren't getting seen uh, more so now than ever before. So the question is if you're, uh, going to be a responsible filmmaker, what do you do to start bringing that audience to you? The first thing is to get over that idea that you are going to bring your film to market and someone's going to come down and make you rich. You know, that uh, it happens sometimes. Eddie Burr, you know, that movie that you, you saw up there, Brothers McMullen, that film was rejected by every distributor when he sent it out. I got it around the same time. There was a really funny, unique movie there for its time that uh, Eddie and I and, and Dick Fisher, his partner at, at the time, sat down and in two weeks recut the film, took 30 minutes out of it. It was the film that won Sundance. It was a film that, that he made over $10 million on. Uh, it's a film that cost him $150,000 to make. And it's a film that we brought to Sundance with a bunch of literal needle drop cues, the same you know, drop it here on the record, drop it here on the record, but luckily nobody noticed it because in the theater they were laughing too loud. Um, but, uh, you know, those stories are, are really one in a million, and we didn't get paid 10 million for that film. Uh, we got paid a lot less, but had a very uniquely designed deal that benefited in the success of the film, that encouraged them to spend to promote it and to finance his next film. Um, the the what generally will happen in the future is you will have to start to figure out how to handle the distribution of your film yourself. Maybe it's not uh, do it yourself, maybe it's do it with, with, with others, that there are a lot of people who are uh, experienced experts in different uh, fields of distribution from the booking to the marketing to doing the collections, the, the publicity that can be hired for a strict fee, that that uh, world, that industry will start to emerge and make itself really known to anyone who, who's <coughs> got a film in a major festival. But hopefully you attack Sundance this is, uh, or any festival you go to with that dream of riches, of Prince Charming swooping you up. It's like your plan D and you, 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 you embrace it with a real reality and recognize that festivals are y your best way to get the word out um, of your film, um, but they're also a way that start to take away from your ability to distribute and make little bits of money y yourself. And you know, just like the story of a Oregon-based filmmaker who had one dream of getting his film shown in the Bend Oregon Film Festival, got it turned down, wouldn't take that uh, no as a no, and you know went across the mountain to the Bend of on a mountain and went to the local theater where the films were playing, got them to book his film on his own, you know, uh, went out and met everybody. And basically by the time he left Bend one week later, he had $10,000 in his pocket and all the people who stayed, who had stayed and just got the film in the festival went home with zero. So which would you rather be? But basically it's common sense, you know, that, you know, a lot of folks it, it still seem to be lacking, you know, simply, you know, building a web page building your, your Facebook page, 
you know, making sure that you get your clips up on YouTube, making sure that you get your trailer up there, all of these things, you know, and writing to the different people that will write about your film and getting them to, to, to respond to it. Everyone is delighted when you ask them for your, their opinion. You know, that's, that's always been how it is. And if you can get a few people to champion you, it starts to be a movement. If you can find six other people, five other people, four other people who are filmmakers like yourselves working in the same sort of way, you've got a touring film festival. You know, uh, folks have been doing these models for years and surviving on it. The fact that we have this great tool called the internet before us, right? That, that allows you to talk about what you want and organize the people that, that you want and um, you know, reach everyone all over the world. Right? The internet's supposed to be an equal access thing that anybody can put up what they want and anyone can watch what they want. That's going to be gone in six months. It's not hysteria. You're losing your future right now. That, that there are efforts afoot. There's one candidate that supports keeping it as it is, and keeping it equal and free, keeping net neutrality, and one presidential candidate that doesn't that wants to kind of change it so that the people that, that, that have the most power continue to have the most power. You guess which way which candidate goes on that. But um, you know, net neutrality is about keeping it exactly how it, how it is right now. But the, the telcos, the cable companies, the Hollywood studios um, are working to, to change that. And unless you get vocal about it and start to, to organize, um, you will see that your future as independent filmmakers vanish. And it's really going to probably start to get decided um, in this next Congress. Um, there are two fantastic uh, websites, uh, Public Knowledge and Save the Internet. One's a org and one's a dot net. And I always forget which one. So try the different suffixes. Um, I also started a blog on this issue called uh, Info wants to be free. Um, dot blogspot dot com, and the links to those sites are there. Um, they, they will become an increasingly uh, amount of activism within the uh, film community. The IFP here in New York and Film Independent in LA are both getting behind this issue now, thanks to my efforts. Right. Uh, and the uh, Independent uh, Film and Television Alliance, the folks that run AFM, uh, have. Gene Pruitt and uh, Lloyd Kaufman, the, the president, founder of Tra Trauma Studios, uh, <coughs> have been very vocal on this and also uh, uh, media consolidation in general. But these, these forces that, that, you know, if you don't know what it is, just go to those sites, go to mine, read up on it. It's a very simple thing, just as I explained it. And the, once we have a, a, a new uh, Congress and a new, uh, new president, um, this issue will be discussed, but if you, unless people speak up, that chance to keep things equal access for everybody is going to go out the window. It sounds like a conspiracy, but it's just the, the, the facts.